This is a food series, right? Fats. Oh, fats and oils. I tested everything under the sun for fats. Uh, the company I worked for, I was the fat guy. Um, every day, I took a, a sample, um, American Singles, and I tested them for fat. And every day, they had to be 30% uh, fat. Or if they weren't, uh, the probability <laughs> pops up. Because they're, well, they're listed where American singles are listed at 30% fat. That's, that was my standard per day. But I tested everything for fat. Um, I uh, I tested something for fat. Well, my colleague tested uh, for oils in, in, in a product. Uh, now, what kind of fats are we talking about? Oh, okay. Let me let me get my little book here. Uh, we got vegetable oils. We have trans fat, hydrogenic fat, unsaturated fat, saturated fats. Uh, basically, fats are solid at room temperature, and when you heat them up, they, they turn to a liquid. Uh, what kind of fats are we talking about? Well, I remember um, seeing, and not seeing the whole operation, but for a person who had a uh, heart, and the doctor basically opened up one of his veins and pulled from one of his veins, this all this thick from one of his veins, that's all fat. Yes, that's what was roaming around my veins if I don't watch my step. Uh, butter fat in uh, butter itself, different from margarine, has a different taste. Fat itself. Salted bu uh, butter, unsalted butter, butter fat, f butter fat in ice cream. Uh, let's see, Breyer's ice cream, 15% uh, butter fat. Delicious. How do I know? I tested Breyer's ice cream. One of the company's products once. I was a good seller too. What happened? What happened was. It was a cold summer, and the Briar's ice cream, they simply put it on the auction block because it wasn't selling where. Well. If it doesn't do double digit, you can get rid of it. Cool Whip, on the other hand, does a double digit uh, each year, and they keep it. If it didn't do a double digit, they would most likely get rid of it. Hmm, hey. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of things if they don't make the the goal that they're supposed to, uh, the company will dump it. Well, yeah, hey, hey, the profits are there, the profits are not. So, um, remember something called seal test ice cream? Mm-hmm. Fat free? <laughs> fat free? It was fat free. <laughs> yes. Well, why am I laughing? Because I know what fat free. Yes, you can you can get fat free products. Um, low fats. I, I tested a. I tested. I think it was something like fifty products that a rival company was bringing out. I got them on a. Friday afternoon, and I gave the results to the VP. I gave the results to McVickers and said they all contain, they're all, as I said, 97% fat free. And McVickers says, 
He called Mike Miles and said, they're 97% fat free. Um, the company had budget gourmet. We couldn't match them. So the division was sold. Uh, yeah. There's, there's that little thing. Uh, at that time, um, substitute of fat products in everything. And we, that was the, the big thing about at that time was fat in products. And since I was a fat guy, I was required to test all our products for fat. And we had to reduce the amount of fat. Um, salad dressings. You have salad dressing that has fat in it and salad dressing that doesn't, is fat free. Uh, products that have fat in it, like uh, American Signals, they say, hey, can you uh, uh, reduce the amount of fat in it? They, they basically said no. Now, I got criticized for American Signals being 30% fat and like it's my fault. And I says, well, there's this little thing called, see that? Right. I can guarantee you one thing. If you can't taste it, it turns into cardboard or it turns into nothing. I've, say, I've eaten um, soup, chicken noodle soup. I can't taste the fat. I can't taste the taste of, uh, yes. People, if they can't taste the flavor there, they can't taste the, when you're eating something. I mean, you're, you're talking because it's uh, uh, million, uh, millions of years, you know, we're still monkeys. Monkeys like eating meat, you know. Uh, they, if the monkeys could talk, they would most likely would tell you what, you know, I don't like that. I'm eating it, but I don't like that. If I give them a good steak, I mean, any a gorilla will eat a steak. Oh, you better know it. Uh, chimpanzees will eat a steak. My cat will eat a steak. Yeah. But, uh, yes, uh, you you can taste fat. That's what, how we humans do it. Of course, uh, the problem is, is um, this stuff around the, the middle becomes fat. My heart, uh, uh, my uh, blood vessels become fatty. Now that's, that's the way it should. Uh, so, yes, and uh, it's very di dangerous. Uh, let's see, um, uh, omega-3 fats are, um, are supposed to be very healthy and they're basically getting rid of, they're putting omega-3 fats into, into products because they're healthy. Uh, they're trying, they're removing other types of fat from products because they're unhealthy. Uh, and if you have something that's healthy, people will buy it. Hey, that's that sort of thing. Back in the 90s, uh, for fat-free, uh, people wanted fat-free. And what happened? Um, what happened is we got gave them fat free. There wasn't enough people uh, at that time to sustain a fat free product. You had fat free for salad dressing. You had for, uh, salad dressing that contained fat. You might say oil. And there wasn't enough people at that time basically the older generation at that time to accept fat-free products. I give you McDonald's, their soy burgers. What happened? Oh, they, they made big advertisement on uh, fat-free products like soy burgers. That's nice, but not enough people bought the burgers. Now, that generation back then, are when they were all in the 50s, that generation now is in the 60s and 70s. Now it becomes highly important to getting fat-free products. Fat-free products are selling now. 
you're replacing uh, this type of fat in it with that type of fat. And uh, yes, those are selling. Because the I was in the 50s back in the 90s. Okay. <laughs> Added 20, 20 or 30 more years. And we want fat-free products. We want them to taste good. There's the thing. To taste good. To have some crunch and be fat-free. Um, it's kind of like uh, carbohydrates. You know what carbohydrates is? Potatoes, apples, you know. Uh, a, a potato is a, you know, you know, has fiber in it. Okay. So does potato chips. <laughs> Popcorn has fiber in it too, right? Except for what do we do with fiber, uh, popcorn? We put butter and sugar uh, and salt on it. What do we do with the, uh, the potato chip? Okay. We fry it. <laughs> yes. So while it's still fiber, the stuff we fry it in isn't very good. You know, oh, it's done in vegetable oil and done in this and done in that. And then we add salt to it. Who wants to have a potato chip without salt on it? It's something like eating pretzels. Process dough. I like pretzels. I like with salt on it. Right. I like eating pretzels with Coca-Cola or Pepsi-Cola or RC that. It's not good for me. Definitely not good for my heart. It's not good for my waist. It's like I like ice cream and, and cake. Guess what's not good for my heart? <laughs> yes. Why, those are the fats. And of course, this carbohydrate. But the fats, the fats in this thing, uh, the frosting on it, it has to be delicious frosting on it. Or I don't. Thing. And you have to have fat. You know, you have to. Uh, you know, the old saying, oil and water doesn't mix. So you really shake it up. Yeah, so you can make, well, it still doesn't mix. That's why you do your uh, salad dressing. You shake up the bottle because to mix everything up, otherwise it separates. I'll give you I'll give you one about some, uh, something I had uh, worked on. Uh, squeeze bottle butter. Yeah. Uh, I don't think they have it anymore. But somebody said, "Is why is it that uh, it's separated? Store shelf showed that uh, it's separated. And what what it says on the label, refrigerated. Okay. Once you open the thing up, you need to refrigerate it." That's very important when you see that something it says it needs to be refrigerated. Otherwise, the the emotions will separate. And uh, I believe one of the companies had uh, butter in a bottle, and we had in our our thing, and you can look at the thing separate basically because it's in warm temperature, you know. In a, my lab, we it was, uh, was sitting on a shelf, you know, basically watch it separate because you need to put it in a refrigerator to keep it from separating. Uh, like you, you have, yes, that's why products that come in cold, cool, okay, um, for fats, uh, well, like Cool Whip has to be refrigerated or it will separate. Uh, there are products that need to be, because otherwise, if you leave them on the shelf, the, the heat of the will separate everything. And you can see it, if, you know, fat layers. They're still good. You shake up the bottle, yeah, and, and that. But strange, strange in food. Um, stories 
glorious stories, all this thing, but I'm not going to really worry about it. This is, this is food chemistry. That, that is food chemistry. Um, when fats and oils separate, did I do oils? I did understand how to do oils, but I didn't do oils. It was a different, different procedure. Mine was using, um, say, for ice cream and milk products. That was a procedure there. And then things like cheeses, that was, um, um, that was interesting. Uh, very beginning, uh, cheeses, what did you do to, to check how much fat is the same in a cheese? Um, sulfuric acid, using sulfuric acid to do that. Uh, we changed. Back of then, then, then we had uh, we we had robots. There was lot, we did a lot of stuff. Technology we changed in technology, but um, when I first started being a fat person, ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. but that's a long time ago, and I don't I don't know what their procedure is now. I presume it's the same same procedure when you're dealing in dairy products. Um, that thing. We developed different procedures. Uh, Lucas, Lucas, Lucas. Lucas, she developed these procedures. She was the seal test ice cream person. Yes. What was her first name? Oh, that's a long time ago. Well, very likely we're all dead. <laughs> it's uh, 30 years ago since I left the company. That's a long time since I did fats. That's what's haunting my dreams. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't finish that. I didn't finish that test. I went. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it's a long time ago. But that's fats and oils. Oh, big difference. Well, let's see. Let's see. My my little master book here. Unchastered fats are tend to be liquid at room temperature and they stale and become off flavors if they're not refrigerated. Hydrogen generated fats are unfat unsaturated fats that have been chemically modified and then saturated solid and resistance to staling. Saturated fats are tend to be solid at room temperatures and Resistant to staling, uh, thanks to the rugger. Oils, uh, liquid, water oils, canola, soy, coin, peanut, and olive oil. Olive oil, olive fruit. Trans fats are usually unsaturated fats that have behaved like saturated fats. Small amounts occur naturally in butter, beef, lamb. Large amounts occur in hydrated oils and shortening. They're unhealthy and are being eliminated from manufactured foods. That's where omega-3 fats come in there. And because they're healthy, meat fats are solid at room temperature because they have high proportion of self-saturated fats. Poultry fats, pork fat, lard are softer than beef and lamb fat because they contain more unsaturated fats. Then you got vegetable and fish oils, and I don't fish oil. You want know fish oil? A little capsule? Yeah. That's um, what do they do with bloodstream? Oh, they dilute the blood. <clears throat> Used to take that, not anymore. Now I take the uh, statin. You know. Every day, one, one pill at, at night, take the stats and. Oh, because why? Because the fat in my <laughs> veins. Yes! You want a healthy idiot? You can solve that by not eating this, the stuff that you eat, like pretzels. About their carbohydrate. They, they it taste good. Yeah. Pretzels with salt on them taste good. The salt is a flavor. 
which is not good for my blood. Oh, and you know of this for decades. Oh, well, I see 20 minutes here. I think that's good. Okay, 